there guys ken here your thrifty apprentice and in today's video we are going to be creating this cake um as a part of the cheap art challenge that i'm currently doing now of course this video is not going to premiere to january and it'll be after the winner for the cheap art challenge is announced but at this point you have seen pictures of this posted in the facebook group um, in the community tab of this section because I did want you guys to see the work um, or one of the pieces that I've done for the Cheap Art Challenge. I thought I can't win. Anyway, so um, this won't be coming out until after the winner is announced. Um, this is being taped in December. It'll premiere in January. Well, as I was doing the cake with the Cheap Art Challenge and I just used the... Let me grab them right quick. So I used the... Um, the 21 uh, marker set, the 21 count marker set that we got from Five Below. Um, the ones that just the ones that just say the illustration markers. And you guys may have seen me picking those up in a YouTube short or something. Um, but these are the markers that I used in, in order to do this project. Uh, I did use some additional products other than just the marker. In the video, you're going to see me use Crayola Twistable Color Pencils in order to do the enhancement um, that you normally see me do with color pencils um, in my marker artwork. So instead of using Prismacolors or another soft lead pencil, I did want to stick to the cheap art, you know, um, stick to the challenge. And here we have... Um, Crayola Twistables, and it's a review for these if you guys want to go check it out. It's called the Crayola Experience. And I think that these are really wonderful. This is like my number one recommended Crayola product. Um, and I use those because those lids were soft enough to take place of like the Prismacolor. Um, and I told you guys before, you can use Crayolas to enhance your work. You really can. Um, I use the white gel pen. And then I, you're going to also see me use Prismacolor premier very thin pencils or very thin pencils um now i did use these uh because they are great for detailing um and they are really 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 super economical i would really classify them as being cheap considering but uh you could i could have just i just wanted to get the detail with those um so this is what came out now of course in the process of doing this i realized I was creating a Halloween cake. I didn't even think about it. I just wanted to, you know, paint a cake and markers. And I was just playing around with blend of the color. So this is what we had. And after this, after I show you guys the demo, I'm gonna come back and show you what I decided to do with this since um, it turned out to be so Halloween inspired, although I didn't intend for it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch the demo on this being created. And then we'll come back after the demo and I'll show you what I do when you always hear me talking about reproducing my work, especially when you're using non-light fast, uh, non fast products. So starting off here, I am going to grab the number 33 Melon Yellow um, color out of the illustration marker set from five below and that is the color that I'm going to use to base in the cake the actual cake part of the cake here so um, now when I use illustration markers guys um, I use a lot of ink I always put down a you know a, a, a blending layer so to speak just to get the paper wet to help the um, alcohol and the colors blend a little easier now here i'm grabbing the number 24 marigold which isn't really a huge color jump from the original color that i put down that melon yellow but there was a little contrast and i figured that um if anything i would go in with some colored pencils in order to maybe rich in that color and deepen it, deepen it in a little bit if I needed to. Um, but, you know, I always give the alcohol ink time to dry. And then I take a look at it and see if I really need to enhance it with colored pencils. But as I always say, when it comes to market illustration work, colored pencils are a really way to um, bridge your color uh, colors with the markers if you need to, or even add body and form. So I always keep that in the back of your mind um, as a little tip. So now on the left side of the cake, I actually used a number 26 pastel peach. 
Um, but from the small experience that I had with the markers already, I knew that that color was going to really act more like a, a, a colorless blender and bleach that orange just a little bit, lighten it. I was trying my best to add a little form to the cake. Now, due to the fact that I do use a lot of ink when I do my alcohol marker coloring, um, there are times when I'll go outside of my designated area. So what you saw me do um, was grab that colorless blender just to kind of um, push that color back into the area I wanted it. Because colorless blenders really work more like an eraser. So here, I'm grabbing the number 95 Burnt Sienna, and I'm using that to um, color in the chocolate topping layer and the drizzles that are running down the side of the cake. Now, this is a really rich and, and nice brown color. These markers are actually really saturated, guys, um, to be from Five Below. Now, there wasn't any other browns in this set, not really, so I had to kind of substitute trying to get a darker tone um, to shade in for the brown accents and shadows. So I actually went with the warm gray five, um, WG five that was in that set. And that's what I'm using in to add the, uh, that depth into the, the chocolate part. Um, now I'm just going to grab that burnt Sienna 95 and I'm going back to blend or to try to blend or force those, um, colors to blend together with that alcohol. Now, I use the chisel tip because it covers a larger area area at once, excuse me, um, and it tends to work better when you're trying to force colors to blend, especially when um, you don't have the exact colors that you were looking for. Um, so after doing a little bit more cleanup work, I'm grabbing, I do believe that's number 48 yellow green from that five below set. And that's what I'm going to use to um, color in my cake platform now I, I i wasn't thinking when i grabbed the green i just wasn't i just wanted to do the, the platform green and after i got the top part of it colored in i went okay orange chocolate green oh this is so a halloween cake and i never thought to do that it was never my intentions now you see me grabbing the number um oh uh i think that's 59 pale green to do the darker shading. I believe it's 59 pale. You know what? Actually, the pale green may be the base color. And yeah, no, definitely. The yellow green 48 is the base color and the shadowing color was the 59 pale green. Um, so I'm doing the bottom part of the stand here. And at this particular point, I'm coloring in the area um, that would be I felt like a shadow would be cast from. And I'm gonna outline the um, cake stand itself, try to give it a little more dimension, make it look a little more round. I added in a little decorative element at the very bottom there, just, just to try to make it look a little nicer. And then I'm gonna grab that original color and go in and try to force those colors to blend so there won't be any harsh lines. They they work pretty well, I'll be honest. Um, now, I'm no alcohol marker guru, and I'm definitely not the best alcohol marker artist on the market, but I think I do okay for myself, and I tend to like the artwork that I do. Um, they have much more of an illustrative feel, and, and I like that. Um, maybe not as realistic as I want in some cases, but I like the work that I do, and these markers worked okay. Um, for how I use alcohol markers. Now there, I took that colorless blender and I was gonna try to add a highlight and kind of circle that top of that platform off. And I didn't like the way it looked, so I grabbed the green to go in and put in another layer and I actually grabbed the darker green. So I changed the color um, of the top of the platform by accident, but it was something that I just had to go with. I did put another layer of that original green on top to just try to blend it down a little bit. And then I went in really heavy with the darker green in order to shadow the shadow areas again. I, I think it still gave it definition. It wasn't supposed to quite come out and be that color, but we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents and we go with them. So I grabbed um, 
the cool gray. You know what? I actually did use new touch markers in order to do this because the five below set only had like a warm gray five, a cool gray five, and I think a green gray five. And I didn't want those really heavy shadows. So I grabbed a cool gray two and a cool gray four from my new touch um, alcohol marker set in order to do the shadows. Um, now I'm, I have a ruler and a pencil and I decided to put some candles on top of the cake. So I'm just kind of measuring that out and spacing them out so that they'll look pretty even. I'm going to throw some domes on the top for the top of the candles. And then I'm actually going to draw in the stripes because I decided to make them um, multicolored. And then since I've already made the cake a Halloween cake, I decided to just keep with the colors that I'd already used in the composition. Um, that way I can try to maintain some color harmony. And I'm just going to use those different shades of orange and green to go in and color in those candles. Uh, now, five below markers are really surprising me, guys. They really are. Um, the color selection is not huge in this particular set because there's only 21 colors. Um, so you really do have to work with them, but they're really juicy and they have a lot of ink in them. So, you know, they stay, the paper stays wet longer in order for me to do my blending. And I'm actually doing this composition on Koli Noor marker paper. I picked that pad up from Walmart. It was super, super cheap and super, super affordable. Um, I, it's like 50 sheets in a pad and I think I may have paid, oh, like five or six bucks for it, if I'm not mistaken. So all of the products being used for this particular composition are really affordable and economical. Even those two gray markers that I bar borrowed from the, um, touch new marker set, that particular marker set, which we're going to get around to looking at eventually, um, was super economical and affordable. Not necessarily um, cheap art, but definitely budget art as far as those were concerned. But I had no choice. I had to borrow them from that set. Um, now, here in the video, you see we are enhancing um, our markers with Crayola twistable color pencils. Now, you can catch these in the Crayola Experience review. Um, I really like these. They are really, really soft. And ironically enough, this marker paper took me adding the colored pencil layers to them. You could see that the pencils were actually adding depth um, and dimension to, to, to the composition. I was really impressed. I was like, okay, this actually may work out. So I just took some different shades of orange um, to try to blend the cake together better. Uh, I'm going to take some different shades of green for the stand. Um, I'm using that same orange and green for the candles. So I'm just really going to kind of hit and miss around the entire composition until I can get it to look more three-dimensional. Um, kind of make sure that my lines are all solid and straight, that my shadows are deep enough where they need to be. Um, so great technique this this is and i love when you know a composition comes together the first time i did not do a practice painting with this and i feel really blessed that it came out looking pretty decent um it, it wasn't intended to be mixed media so i knew i wasn't going to be throwing a whole bunch of products at it so i'm really glad that you know these really cheap markers along with these really cheap color pencils worked out really well now here i had to i had to grab my prismacolor premier very thin or very thin however you want to pronounce it pencils now but i didn't really break the rules because these are really cheap i mean it's that simple um this 12 pack of pencils i think cost me about seven bucks um they are not meant to be used like standard um Prismacolor pencils where you're trying to do a whole composition with them. Um, they are really meant for exactly what I'm using them for now. And that's detailing. They have a super hard lid. And another product that we're eventually going to get around to um, doing some work with as well as reviewing. But here you get to kind of see them preliminary in, in action. And you can see that they help to form some really crisp lines around the outside 
of each segment, um, I thought that it added really, really good dimension and it kind of raised those um, drizzles up off of that cake. I really love the way that that worked. I did take a black um, pencil and just kind of here and there hit and missed um, with adding some tones. I decided I would not use a black pen to outline this. I was trying to keep it as far away from being comic book as I could. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I love comic book work. I love comic book illustration. I want to do some myself. It's just not the direction I necessarily wanted for this particular um, composition. So, yeah, I'm just going to finish up enhancing here different areas that I thought needed just a little bit more definition and work. Uh, I think I'm going to throw some gray in the shadow area too, just to enhance it a little bit. Um, now I'm gonna grab a Jelly Roll. This is number a number 10 Jelly Roll. I love this gel pen. It is my favorite. It is very reliable. And I'm just going in and putting in the really sharp highlights that I feel would have been on the composition, um, depending on where the light was coming. And I kind of pretended that my light was coming from the top left-hand side. So that's kind of why I did what I did with the highlights. Um, so there you see me throwing in that gray in the shadow back, area guys. hopefully you enjoyed the creation process for this um i had a lot of fun with doing it um so now let me show you what i'm doing with this piece since um it does lean so much towards you know halloween colors and sort of a halloween feel so what i decided to do and what I do with a lot of the artwork that I use, really cheap products in that are non light fast, you don't have pigment information, um, because the only thing you can really do is close them up in a sketchbook. But I like to kind of, you know, get my work out there, and I actually like to sell my work. No, nope. I mean, just it is just what it is. So I took the painting, I laid it on the scanning bed of my printer, and I scanned it, scanned it in. Um, I took a photo editing software and I did a few enhancements here and there just to make it look good, you know. Um, and then I divided the image up into four by six photo prints and printed the image out on a four by six photo paper. I added the Halloween, Happy Halloween logo to it just so it'll be sort of a flat one layer thing i thought it was really cute so and then i added some confetti in the background because it is a cake and it's really all about halloween now i'm gonna hold it up a little bit more for you guys so you can see the way that that came out it came out really really nice yeah so now to finish that off or uh to make the card and basically what i do is i reproduce these and i make a box of cards there are 12 cards in a box for $12. You get the card in the envelopes. All you have to do is put them out of the box, open them up, write on the inside what you want, and then give them to whoever you want. So it's just a little way, you know, I try to make an extra dollar here and there. So I'm gonna take a corner rounder and I am actually gonna round the corner of these photos. As you guys know, that is my signature for my cards, rounded corners on everything, right? Right, so we're gonna round those corners off. And I think that just gives it a really nice, clean look and something different from what you're used to seeing. And then I'm going to take an orange card base here. And again, I'm going to do the same thing because that is my signature, right? So I'm going to round off the corners of my card, including on the folds. That's just me. I love doing that makes my cars look unique to me and it kind of takes them away from looking dollar stores, right? So as you can see, when you open it up, you got your indents, really nice card. You can write another sentiment on the inside if you want. But like I said, I produce 12 of these and then I sell them. So we're just gonna mat that on the top of that. We're gonna stick it with a cream envelope and then I'll put 12 per box. And then, you know, I'll put them up on my site to be sold or, I sell them if individual order comes in, um, and you'll have your cards, or I'll, I'll have cards in, or anybody who decides to buy them will have cards um, already ready to go on Halloween time roll around. So I'm just gonna put some adhesive on the back of this, and over the over the next couple of months, hopefully the Etsy site is gonna not only go live, but it'll actually have 
plenty of choices you can pick. And as you guys already know, this will be one of the cards in the card catalog that you'll be able to order if you would like to. Um, uh, my tape runner gives me problems every now and then, guys. Just bear with me for a second. All right. So, let's make sure we got enough adhesive on it for it to hold down. And this is how each one of the cards will be made. It will be hand placed. You're guaranteed to get a genuine handmade card every single time. I'll just glue that down to the base and there we go. We have a really nice Halloween card that'll be producing badges. They can be given out for Halloween, all made from our cheap art challenge photo. So there you have it. Halloween came early. <laughs> So guys, hopefully you saw something in this video that you liked. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you'll know when new content come out. Use the comment section. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. And what do you guys think about this entire project? You see, you can really use cheap art to produce some really, really nice things. And now here with this card, I never have to worry about it fading. Um, they can use it. They can give it away to someone. They could even frame the card if they wanted to because it is an original piece of artwork, although it's reproduced. Don't forget to like us on the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page, Instagram page as well as TikTok. You can check us out in Paints, Pencil, Pastels, and Markers, which is the Thrifty Apprentice um, sponsored Facebook group. Um, you can check out my most recommended supplies at the link at the very bottom of the video description. And remember, as I tell you guys at the end of every single video, just keep painting.